listen, please compare me to Beyonce <laughs> as often as you would like. Done. I'm Lorraine. And I'm Langston. And this is Earth's Mightiest Show. Where we are going to be talking about all the stuff in the Marvel Universe that you are hardcore fanning about. Heck yeah we are, and this week it's Spider-Man. Yeah! There's some huge anniversaries <laughs> happening for Mr. Spider-Man. One of the biggest is Amazing Spider-Man issue number 800 coming this Wednesday. Heck yeah it is! I'm super stoked, one, because 800 is the most issues of an ongoing series. I mean, there have been some jocks in there. Ongoing series, but you get it. That's it's a lot, a lot of issues. Of it's issues. A lot. And, uh, I mean, he was introduced all the way back in Amazing Fantasy yeah. number 15 in 1962. So this is like, this I is long-term anniversary. This is really yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, he got his first ongoing series in 1963 in Amazing Spider-Man. That's 55 flipping years. And uh, bringing it back to the Green Goblin. Oh, of course, an iconic uh, Spider-Man villain, now known as the Red Goblin. Yeah, Fireface. Fireface. Hashtag Fireface. I like it. <gasps> oh, yeah. And also, <laughs> it's uh, marking the end of Dan Slott's tenure, who's mm. been writing the book for many years. Uh, he began with Amazing Spider-Man 648. That's... Yeah. Almost a little over 150 issues, which oh, is a lot. I wasn't going to figure that out in my head you at won't. all. <laughs> uh, issue number 800 also has art by Stuart Immonen. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and he's joined by a number of artists mm -hmm. that have made the last 10 years so, so amazing. So you're <laughs> so, definitely yeah. going to want to pick that up. That's uh, on shelves this Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And since we're here in the House of Ideas, we thought we'd go run over to Spider-Man executive editor Nick Lowe. He's here to give us a sneak peek at what's to come. Amazing Spider-Man 800 is almost here. I just got my copies in the office. Check it out. We got some variant covers here. Steve Ditko. We got Umberto Ramos connecting. Oh, I don't want to show you that. That is secret. Don't rewind and look at that. And then a blank one that you could take to a convention and get it drawn on there. But there are three important things to know about this comic. Thing number one, it is 80 pages of just one story. That's crazy. Dan Slott wrote it all. Thing number two, five of the best artists in Marvel history drew it. Stuart Immonen, Umberto Ramos, Giuseppe Camuncoli, Nick Bradshaw, Marcos Martin. Ah, they're all so good, it's too good, it's too good, we must end it. Third thing, there are special suits that you might have heard of, but I hope you haven't. And there are special guest stars that I know you have not heard of. You do not want to miss this comic. Do not miss Amazing Spider-Man 800. You guys should go pick up Amazing Spider-Man number 800 on stacks on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Go get it. I like it. Live your life. With Spider-Man, please. Oh, how nice. Um, but our cup runneth over with Spider-Man occasions. May 2018 is also the 40th anniversary of a different Spider-Man. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, we are also uh, talking about none other than Toei's Spider-Man, who came to live action Japanese television in 1978. And if you haven't seen the show yet, Oh boy, it is a spectacular mix of Buckle Sentai, up. cinematic <laughs> magic, and 1970s action. That means giant robots, uh, kaiju-like monsters, and amazing 70s-ness. If, like if you like the 70s, you're in the right place. And <laughs> clips of the show have been hard to come by, but uh, we've got the hookup, yeah. right? So we are going to unlock the Marvel Vault for you right now. Take a look. I am not yeah. over that 
cat. Mm. I, I will say it's a cat demon. It's not mm -hmm. just a kitty. It's not yeah. a fluffy kitty. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh boy. Oh, listen, there's so much happening <laughs> in that. I, I mean, I'm just going to enter all rooms just, hey! I, I want to, every morning when I wake up, I want to open my closet. I want clothes to fly Wee! forward. Yeah, just. At yeah. my face. I'll, and then, gzz, I mean, I mean, it's really, it's efficiency. The Japanese Spider-Man, I mean, it's, it's much easier than like, you know, getting dressed in an alley. Why do we do anything else other <laughs> well, than watch that? <laughs> well, 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 if you like that, you're in luck because we're gonna be releasing yeah. more clips of the 1970s Spider-Man show from Toei as bonus episodes of Earth's Mightiest Show. And you can check those out on our Facebook page, marvel.com, and across all of our social media channels. But not now. Because first, we're gonna be talking to author and accidental activist, Francesca Ramsey. Check it out. I am here with the Francesca Ramsey. Okay, I, I wanna talk about some important stuff like your book, but also we have to talk about Twitter because Ugh. like any good host, I stalked your Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, hopefully there was nothing really embarrassing on there. Well, just the right amount. Okay, right. okay, good. No, but the thing I wanna talk about is you were talking about the ladies of Wakanda. Absolutely. What gets you fired up about them? Ugh, everything. Um, <laughs> Hair, outfits, yes. strength. I mean, I feel like they are such feminist icons. And I think that they also are surrounded by men that actually listen to them and yeah. value their opinions in a way that's like, you are part of the team. And I don't know, I, I that really spoke to me because I would like to be surrounded by more of those kinds of dudes. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I, yeah. I never thought about that, but that's like such a great way to put it. There's such wonderful mutual respect happening. Yeah, it's it feels like in Wakanda, the women that are part of like the council, that are part of like the leadership, are are not just there as like set dressings. They are there to actually contribute and have like a point of view and, and it's really taken seriously and, and I really appreciate that about it. Well, let's talk about your book. Well, that escalated quickly. Memoirs and Mistakes of an Accidental Activist. Yes, yes. Long title, love it. Yes, thank but you. <laughs> I have to say, something that you talk about a lot, obviously, not just memories, but mistakes. Absolutely. It's in the title. I think that they are crucial to our advancement and also to hopefully just driving conversations forward. So what made you ready to, as you would put it, or have put it in the book, sort of the Beyonce perfection exterior, like to pull it away and show people a little bit more? Listen, please compare me to Beyonce <laughs> as often as you would like. Done. Um, I just felt that I often get in situations with my audience where people will say like, oh, I really look up to you, I wish I was like you, which is, of course, very flattering, but sometimes it makes me a little sad because I think people are putting these like unnecessarily or unrealistic high expectations mm -hmm. on themselves, whether it be their career or how smart they are or their relationship or what they look like or whatever else. And for me, I felt like, well, maybe if people understood a little bit more about my journey, mm -hmm. they would feel less inclined to compare themselves to me and say, oh goodness, I got this thing wrong, or I screwed up, or I didn't know this thing, and now I'm feeling bad about it. Yeah. Um, I would think that if more of us were upfront about the fact that we didn't always know things, that we've made mistakes, that that can really inspire and encourage other people. I love that. Well, you actually kind of like perfectly segue to my next question, which is, uh, you talk about that you didn't know everything. Absolutely. Um, which I found personally just reading the book, you know, was really inspiring. And is there something that you say to young people or if people want advice about how they can know more about social issues and uh, just get into learning more, what would be your advice? Absolutely, I mean, I um, shouted out some other books that mm -hmm. were really influential for me. Uh, the New Jim Crow, The People's History of the United States oh, yeah, is, is a really great. great book to start with. Um, Redefining Realness by Janet Mock, oh, yeah. who's, who's really wonderful. Well, I'm gonna chime in and say, also read this book. Yes, please read now this book. Now read this book. <laughs> uh, I loved it. I know you guys are gonna love it, so go pick it up in stores, wherever you're brick and mortar or online. And and there's an audiobook and I'm doing the voice. What? I don't do Amazing. that in it, but it's just like a little sample of, of, of what you can hear soon. <laughs> some of the um off the audio offerings. Well, there you go. You guys go pick it up. Thank you so much for talking oh, with us. Oh, thank you for having me. I love the thing that she said about the Dora Milaje having really respectful communication with the men of Wakanda. I thought that was so insightful. I feel like I've thought about a lot of this stuff, but I didn't really put my finger on that, and I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I no, the Dora Milaje, aside from uh, Black Panther, of course, my favorite aspect of Wakanda oh, is the Dora Milaje yeah. because I mean, if, I, yeah, if I had a Koye behind me, always give me that look. Oh. Give, I mean, 
There, there are some looks that she sends that, that make me, I got to be a better person in my life. Would you mm. ever dress up as the Dora Milaje because you do have the same haircut? Sure. It, can I, can yeah. we make that a picture? Pen it in. Write it down, yeah. Okay. You guys, look forward to Halloween. I will be dressing up as Professor X. Um, um, <laughs> can you imagine what a nightmare? Anyways, no promises. There were a lot of other things happening this weekend. Let's talk about anything else. Uh, like a royal wedding. Yeah. It was almost like something happened. Uh, but it happened. I don't know it what happened. it would have been. Oh, I know what it was. What Over was it? on our Facebook page oh, yeah. during the weekend, we celebrated uh, in Marvel fashion. Oh, that's some, right. Some Marvel wedding. Yeah. We play a little game with you on our Facebook page, mm -hmm. quizzing you on whether some iconic Marvel Comics couples had tied the knot or not. Uh, <laughs> Jokes. Yeah. Uh, and some of you <laughs> did. And you did great. Uh, how'd you do, Lorraine? I did. Um, I actually did pretty well, surprisingly, because I wrote it. Oh, surprisingly, yeah. you wrote a quiz. You aced the quiz that you wrote. Yeah. Yeah, it was well, hard. well, that's not bad. Well, shout out to those of you who <laughs> didn't write this quiz and who played. <laughs> yeah, you guys, thanks. Uh, and if you made it all the way to the end, you know there is soon going to be our very own royal wedding, mm -hmm. sort of. Not officially, but Kitty Pride and Colossus are finally locking it down yeah. after all this time. It's pretty real because he, he's shiny. Royalty. Yeah, he's shiny. I mean, he's shiny and she's, I mean, she's So she's already got the bling? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, get out of here. We're going to be the we're gonna be the best guests at this wedding. Uh, uh, <laughs> you can see their wedded bliss in X-Men Gold issue number 30 mm. on June 20th. Oh, a June wedding. It's a popular month. It's oh, a popular it's month so of weddings. Oh, nice time to be married. Uh, you know some other weddings? Uh, there's some other Marvel weddings I would I would have liked to go to Aunt May and Doc Ock's wedding oh because my I God. love awkward situations. Yeah, can you imagine being there? Just like, no mistake. Ooh. Did he have the arms on and the tux? Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah of course. You're not going to take your arms off for your wedding. Also, speaking of awkward weddings, She-Hulk and the Mole Man. Mm. Look it up. How do you, how just, do you like, she the has to talk man? to him like... Honestly, Looking at the floor. on some level, I feel bad for the mole man because all he wants to do is pull a woman into his underworld and marry her. He's just like looking for commitment so hard in all of the wrong places. Don't kidnap him. <laughs> I love the 70s. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Mwah. Anyways, you guys, tell us what you thought of the show and our incredible guest, Francesca Ramsey, on social media with a hashtag Earth's Mightiest Show. See you next time. I'm Lorraine. And I'm Langston. And this is Marvel. Your universe. Thanks for watching Earth's Mightiest Show. If you like this, like this, and subscribe to the Marvel channel. Or click that box over there to watch our last episode. Who in the Marvel Universe would you marry? I would marry Mary Jane. Oh, I would marry her too. Right? Although she is hard to lock down. <laughs>